Okay, good morning, everybody. And if you are not in the IV course, you're in the wrong room. So if you're in the IV course, you're certainly in the right, you're in the right place right now. One of the greatest things about coming to any conference that I found from speaking all over the world is, yes, the knowledge that you take home with you, but the secondary gain, which is as good as the primary, is the capability and the ability to meet people and network. Um, if you haven't taken the time to become a little bit personality, outward going, it is worth the effort because you'd be surprised the person next to you in the hallway or anywhere else may have something that knowledge that you need, plus may have something that may be perfect for you to be able to utilize in your practice. Um, I always like to start off the session by knowing who you are, why you came, what your objectives are. This is a very long day we get to spend together. And by doing that, I get a feel for what is it that your interest is, and I can tailor it the, the, what we're speaking about specifically to your needs. What I'm going to ask you to do is to turn to somebody for just one moment. Um, I'll give you like four minutes, five minutes max to be able to talk to that person, not someone you came with and that you know, someone that you don't know. Introduce yourself. And what I want you to do is in just a few moments, first exchange uh, greetings and then tell that person because they're going to introduce you. You're not going to introduce yourself today. Each person will introduce their, the person they spoke about, who you are, where you're from, what kind of medicine you do, whatever interest you'd like to tell us in about 30 seconds, and why you're taking this course, because I'd like to hear that as well. I'll give you about five minutes. Go ahead and introduce yourself to someone around you, please. Okay, let's get started if we can. Because we're in a uh, large room and um, we're a pretty large group, I'm going to ask that when you introduce someone, you get up, introduce them, turn to the crowd, whichever way that may be the best, speak as loudly as you possibly can and do it in a succinct, couched, quick manner if you can. Let's start with you, please, first. Well, a smart cardiologist. Let's give him applause, okay? <laughs> Welcome from Taiwan. Go ahead, please, doctor. Stand up and tell everyone who you're into. As you can see, we're a pretty diverse and wide group. Did you just have someone else to introduce? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Terrific. Welcome. Well, welcome, everybody. As you can hear from the group, we're a very diverse and very different group amongst us. I'm Mitch Gen, um, the person who will be teaching most of this course today, along with some very wonderful lecturers throughout the day. This is a long day. By the way, in the past five years, I've given a little over 31,000 IVs, um, closer to 32,000 at this point in time in five years. The good news is it, I've never had a serious side effect, and any side effects that I've had, I've been able to correct in moments. The whole concept of this course is to be able to impart to you the A to Z about IV therapy, but simultaneously let you walk out of here being confident, 
knowing what to do and what not to do, the most important thing that you could learn from any course, specifically one where you're new to it, there are some people that have already knowledge in IVs, the most important thing is to know what you don't know. Don't give what you don't know. I will try to stress upon you safety, efficacy, simultaneously what I want to do is let you walk away with four or five good protocols for you to use safely. Start with that. We'll eventually do an advanced course. Get used to that. You can treat 99% of the things and you can always call me. My, my phone is always open. Uh, I am the medical director of Strax Longevity Center. We're 15 doctors, 14 plastic surgeons. I'm also the medical director of, of uh, Optimal Wellness and Longevity Institute in the north part of my county in Florida, which we, where we do stem cell transplant and also integrative medicine IV therapy as well. I'm also the medical director for ADL and several other companies. So again, today's concept, I have so much to impart and so many people to impart so many things to you. It will be impossible to read you the slides. I never read my slides anyway. Um, you do have most of the slides in your packet. I suggest that you sit back, take notes on the important things, and really just try to absorb as much as you can because 6 o'clock will come as fast as you can imagine because this will go very quickly. I will try to stay true to the schedule at 10.30 to give you the break. We'll not stay true to the schedule when it comes to what it says. It will never happen. And I will make sure that your lunch does occur at 12.30 to 1.30, I think it is. Um, it is. Or it is 11.30 to 12.30. Do make sure that your lunch is over and back in this room on time because we won't have enough time to, to continue. This is a certificate course. Make sure that the Ashley out front has your information so that we do send you your certificate. It's nice to have. So anyone ever asks, yes, I've taken this course. And yes, here's what I've done and what my knowledge is. Um, that's, we're going to focus a lot today in case study. Too much of the A4M uh, courses are often lots of facts. And, and it all hit me one time when someone called me for some help and said, oh, Mitchell, listen, I went to these courses, I learned these things, and I have all these sticky papers like homocysteine, give B12, trimethylglycine, you know, all this stuff on the wall. I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, that's no way to learn something. The best way is what you did. There should be a residency slash internship slash externship attached to a program like this. Unfortunately, there's not. So I'm going to try to do as much of grand rounding with you today, thought processing, let you think through it. I'm going to ask a lot of questions, and I will call upon you to, to be able to help me with that as well. So a little boy decides... He's going to write, he needs $100, he wants to get a bike. So he's going to decide, he's going to write a letter to God. Dear God, I need $100. Please send as soon as possible because I need to get this bike. Folds it up, puts an envelope, mails it to God and to heaven. Puts it in the mailbox. Of course, the post office gets this, not sure what the hell to do with the letter. So they forward it on to the White House. The White House looks at it and says, isn't this adorable? This eight-year-old kid's asking for 100 bucks. Goes and shows our president. president says, hey, send the kid $5. It's a nice thing to do. So they do that. Kid gets the mail, opens up, sees it comes on the return address from Washington, from the Capitol, got $5 in it. Looks at it, throws it down, takes another piece of paper from his desk, starts writing back again. Dear God, I don't know what happened to my letter. It got lost and ended up in the White House. And, and the assholes took 95% taxes. <laughs> All right? I figured it's past the tax time. If you haven't filed, either A, you have nothing to file, you haven't done too well this year, or B, if you haven't filed, you'll, someone will be hauling you off to take you to jail, so here we go. Um, there's an IV pretest. we'll do this together, it's going to go quicker. I'm going to ask someone, anyone, just give me the answer to it. Elevation of, this is a pretest. don't worry if you don't know the answers, okay? Elevation of a CPK with no history of strenuous exercise may also be a good indicator of your lab's not reporting correctly, liver disease, early cardiac inflammation, or none of the above. What do you think? CPK. Which one? C. C. Okay. Elevation with no history of strenuous exercise. Right? Maybe an early cardiac inflammatory mark. If I told you it wasn't, what is it? What's the answer? This person has no cardiac inflammation. Nothing wrong with the heart. Nope. Good guess. Nope. Didn't exercise. But that would have been the first thing. If they strenuous exercise, you would expect the CPK to go up because it's a muscle band 